All right, well, let me just do the fucking intro. All right, thank you for coming on to another episode of Texas Strip Club's Uncensored Podcast. I'm DJ Jack, and here it is with my good friend, DJ Big D, Little D on the side. Anyway, well, we're going to start talking about places we both work together. Chicas Bonitas of Austin, Texas. Danny, can you say hello to all the people in the house? It's just me and you. It's the internet, bitch. All right, just oh. fucking say it. Hello, everybody in the house. All right. Now, uh, I think we should just do a couple of uh, different ones about chicas because if we start talking about it just continuously, we'd be on. Well, I just wrote, why don't we just write a book? Because then that'd be too many fucking pages. I barely scratch the surface. There's a girl that once said it's okay for me to tell tell her a uh, cocaine uh, butthole story. What? Exactly. There's we're a girl with a butthole? With cocaine Cocaine and, and butthole? Yeah, we're talking about that later. Anyway, look. So we're talking about chicas, alright? First. Don't be talking about you... Frank's girlfriend like that. <laughs> I'm not talking about her. Anyway, look. How would you describe chicas bonitas of Austin, Texas to somebody who has never been to that particular club? I don't know. I haven't been there in a couple of years, so I don't know. Okay, how no, wait. Changed. What was your <laughs> look? But you were there, okay? Yeah, but see, you were there. The, the but the before when I was there was nice. It was okay. People, we all got along and everything like that. Nobody was trying to rip you off no more. Nobody's trying to freaking stab your ass no more. You didn't have people running around cutting people in the face out in the parking lot. But I mean, so I can't. I, pull my gun somewhere I can't gun. tell you. Let me describe what Chica's is now. No, I, I was saying I your, haven't been no, there your since now. impression of that of what it was when you were there. So you already did that. You just described it. Yeah, when we, I was there, we were um, peaceful and just. Yeah. Well, when uh, the last year, I would say 365 days, uh, there were people. There were people bringing guns in the club, shooting shit. Like one guy, we literally had him on tape, pull out a gun just so he could post for a picture, and accidentally went off as he's about to put it back in his pants. That guy, was well, at least he didn't go off in his pants. You know, that's his dick if he did. Now nah, it's fucking violence. Managers ripping people off. It was fucking bad. It's fucking bad. Uh, <coughs> we're going to talk about that kind of stuff. Uh, but first, uh, I want to talk about Danny. Can you tell me how you got hired and how you got me? Hired at Chica's. Well, I got told to go on to an audition at Chica Bonitas. I wasn't asked if I wanted to because at that point I hadn't DJed in two years. Wait, 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 hold on. What do you mean you got told? Well, see, I was trying to work at this one place called Capital City Janitorial or something like that. I got fired. Oh, yeah, you and plus then, you had bad fucking knees. And then uh, I was end up getting sick, and then uh, I got a phone call from a certain other DJ, uh, another friend of ours, a mutual Maybe. acquaintance of acquaintance of ours, that said, "Hey, I told my buddy about you that you speak Spanish and this and that. You need to go get this audition taken care of." Wait, who who was? Because. I'm over at the I'm over at Sugars renegotiating my contract to stay here. And I was like, look, Mr. Q, I don't know. I don't want a DJ, but I wasn't he pretty much didn't give me a choice. He was like he was kinda acting like my dad because he knew I needed a job, so he was like, No. I hooked you up an interview, an audition, go get it done, and this and that. I'm gonna call him, I'm gonna tell him you're gonna call him right now. And he better get the, the second, the next call after I hang up with him better be yours. And I was like, oh, damn, like, okay, like, you ain't my pops, but shit. And that's how I got back into uh, Chicas. That's how you got back in the strip club game, but you got well, into Chicas. Well, that's where I started with Chicas, because I kind of did one night, one afternoon gig at, back in the day when it was Sugars with, with, with that friend of ours, Mr. Q, that fucking said, you going to take this audition. So, yeah, that's how I met him. And 
then this fool I brought him on later on because the other DJ was acting a fucking idiot and I ended up working 15 days straight 15 doubles straight wait really? Yeah, that's when I brought you in to cut. That's when I told you. Oh, I didn't know about the 15 days yeah, straight, though. Dude, that's why I told you. You were like, you were asking me, like, how the fuck? He goes, because at one point, he was like, you you started drinking again? I'm like, no. He's like, what the fuck? Like, because I look real tired. I was like, dude, like, I'm, I'm on my fourth, uh, I was on my fourth double. And then it's like, fucking just to go home, come back, take a couple hours sleep, nap. And then go back to the club. Did that for 15 days. And I told him, I was like, either y'all find somebody or I'm going to quit. And then I brought Jack in here. Then he went in there for like a little bit and covered for like a couple of days. And I was like, all right, I'm back. Let's go. Let's do this shit. But yeah, it was Wait, pretty. Wait, Stan had quit at that point again? Yeah, Stan was doing his stupid shit again. Just. Being a little, throwing a little hissy fit here and there. It's like, boo, dude. Like, just stop. Shit, when I worked with Stan and I, he had to come, he worked, since he worked night, shit, I couldn't plan anything till after 8.30. He was supposed to be there at 7. Wouldn't show up till 8.30. It's like, till 8 or 8.30, and that's when I'm getting ready to leave. Be like, yo, bounce, bro. It's like, dude. But of course, they let him. They would let him pretty much do whatever he wanted. He'd get pissed off, decide he didn't want to come to work for a couple of days. He'd say he'd quit, and then there's like, oh, there they go, calling him again, and blah blah blah. You gotta come back, please come back, blah blah blah. And then what has happened? He's like, well, I'm gonna take another week off, and then I'll go back to work. It's like, and they accepted stuff like that. It's like it's stupid. See, that's why the big issue with that place has not been that it's not, you can't make money. It's just that you got morons run the place because Frank, one of the owners, lets people just do whatever the fuck they want. As long as while he's there, they follow his fucking rules. Um, and that that's where the biggest problem lied because they had Moses was smoking the fucking ice. In the fucking uh, office. And, uh, <coughs> in the office, wherever he had a chance to do that shit. Yeah. Well, see, those things only happen because you have ineffectual owners, which can be a problem at certain clubs. Because if the owner is incompetent, which Frank is, yeah. because he obviously lets people steal and sell drugs in his club, um, you you just you you're you have a high turnover rate, which means your employees um, don't last that long. So you've got to constantly hire new employees. And you see, if you're doing that, you're getting a reputation for not being able to keep employees. And if you can't keep employees, <coughs> how the fuck are you gonna make money? So that was the that was the big thing right there. And that's why they needed me. And the reason why I got pushed up to nights was because um, I, I, I worked Saturday and Sunday, right, for a year. And I was about ready to quit because I wasn't making any money because Moses uh, literally scared off every every stripper we had. And I wouldn't get a stripper until like three or four. And uh, that's the upstairs neighbor's dog is there. Or tail, yeah. Anyway, well, I remember that when I told uh, them. Yeah, no, and I was like, I ain't making money. Because uh, I remember you asked me one time, like, well, how's it going? I said, Well, I'm not making a damn dime because the girls would get there so late sometimes. Well, they would get there at three, but they wouldn't actually hit the floor till four thirty, which made them like, oh, well, we ain't got tip the morning manager. We don't have to tip you guys, and they knew they didn't have to, and. Uh, fucking uh, Moses would make a stink about that, and then what would happen? It's like, oh well, we're just not—we're not gonna show up until five thirty, so you can't bullshit and try to get money out of us because we're not morning girls. Yeah, he pretty much sunk it. I was about to quit, and then thankfully Stan pulled his like, I don't want to work for a month, 
and left. I fell into the. I <coughs> fell ass backwards into the position. Yeah, because they told me, and I told. Them, I already told you I'm not working nights, and I'm not working Tuesdays because that's when Frank works. So, I work Mondays, Wednesday, Thursdays, and Fridays, and then I had the weekends off because I had been there the longest out of the three the three new DJs, the other two DJs that came in, which was Jack and then DJ Miguel, Miggy B. I mean, once he came in, I was like, all right, and that's how I was able to take more time off. Sometimes when I'd get like little sick, a little sick, a little mental issues would go on, come in my head. I'd be like, yo, I need to go home, recharge this and that. Can one of you cover for me? They said, they would say, yeah, if Stan was there, shit, I couldn't, I, I wouldn't, oh, excuse you couldn't me. Even take I a wouldn't shit trust he... to ask him to cover for me. Because he won't show up. He'll be like, oh, I forgot. It's like, oh, it's not my day. And they're like, yeah, but you pro- you told him you were going to come for him. Oh, I forgot. And then he'd still keep his damn job. So I'm like, and I got to take a risk. Man, no shit. Because that guy was completely... You know, he still is unreliable. But uh, that that was the biggest problem. Um, just idiots. Or just people who didn't make decisions. Poor decisions were at most, at best. They did poor decisions. I'm not going to lie, not all the managers, because in the time that I was there, I kid you not, I think they went through 13 managers. You were there under Mark, right? See, I started there when uh, it was the general manager was Mark. I was there when it was Sean. And then I was there for several new daytime managers, several nighttime managers. Dude, I had a manager that was from the other Chicas Club in Dallas come and and the uh, run the club over here for a little bit till they found a manager, and then they brought another one from Dallas because the little uh, they brought an old man Mike. Old man Mike, I liked old man Mike. Mike Mike was cool. He was a little he was a little out there sometimes, but he was cool people. Mike's was cool people. I told him one time, I was like, yo, Mike, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit. I quit. I'm going to go to the store real fast. He's like, all right, just make sure you bring me back a, a candy bar and uh, I'll pretend that I didn't know you left the club. And I would leave once or twice. And I'd go just to go get something to eat real fast, but I would let him know, like, shit, sometimes Stan would leave. They would tell me sometimes he would leave just to go get something from the store next door and, like, They'd come back to, like, no music a couple of times. I was like, what? I go, shit. I let the music just start drowning down just a bit. They'd fucking come start chewing me out. They'd be like, no, what you doing that for? Like, don't don't be letting the music die down. I was like, whoa, damn. He stands been what way? Then he's walking in all nonchalant while the music goes. Like, oh, shit, the music stopped. And then runs over, turns it on. I was like, what the fuck? Like, what? You want to run your club like that? You, you can run it like that. Right into the ground. Yeah. And one of the biggest mistakes they had was firing you because we took a long time to find anybody that was even good enough to fucking take your place. And, no, not even good enough to take your place. It was just like, it was actual warm fucking body at that point. But, um, uh, and you know you got you got fired over the stupidest thing in the fucking world. So we're king. How how'd you get, how'd you get fired? Cause apparently we decided to open at an eight o'clock in the damn morning, June twenty seventh of three what now three four years, so ago twenty twenty seven and twenty. And uh, yeah, cause Mexico was playing in the World Cup. And they didn't even win. And apparently I showed up three minutes late. But hey. Three minutes late over four or five years. Uh, four or five years that I was with the club. Of putting up with their health. Fuck. I was, was kind of glad to go. I mean not to. not saying I don't miss certain people that work at the club. That were at the club at the time. We'll do that one next. Talking about friendships but, we have made. It's two bars. 
Um, so I quit. Um, uh, the last two years, I mean, well, I mean, the shutdown was horrible. But um, so I worked for a manager named Renee, a drug dealer, sells cocaine. Anyway, they they made me enforce all these rules. All right, rules that Frank said enforce. Frank is the dumbass owner that's letting them steal and sell drugs in the club. Um, yeah, that's an idiot. Yeah, and <coughs> I was told to enforce these rules. Managers told me to enforce the rules, and I didn't enforce the rules. But then every time one of the strippers, particularly one of them that they would let suck their dick, even though you know they're married or you know got a girlfriend, all that shit. They, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, they they would start crying, and then they tell me the same thing. You know, we we can replace you tomorrow. Oh, uh, uh, Frank, uh, Frank, Frank gave me several speeches about how I'm pissing off the girls and they're not going to want to come back. I was like, the same girls that you, uh, you say that you, you know, are firing because they're yeah. done doing stupid shit. No, no, there was one girl. Uh, I don't know if you remember her Aspen. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah. So the moment they rehired this chick for the eighth time, I told him, I was like, don't fucking hire this girl. Don't let her work with me. I don't want her working with me. But, you know, she was sucking Renee's and Renee's dick. Uh, yep. Yeah, you know, his girlfriend don't know about that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Probably now, anyway. So, this chick, even though it's Chicas Bonitas, which means that it is a club where they play Spanish music. By the name alone. Yeah. This girl refused to dance to anything in Spanish, stood there on stage, did not move, Basically, he stood at attention, till, and I was like, hey, you got to do something. Then proceeded to stand in the DJ booth. With The DJ booth was not that big. Yeah. Okay, if you, if, literally, if somebody is standing in front of you and you slide behind them, your dick will go right across their asshole. I had to go to the bathroom. I was like, I need you to move so I can get out of here. She's like, don't touch me. I'm like... I need to get out of the DJ booth. This is not your area. I don't know why you walked in here. You need to get out. <coughs> don't touch me. I was like, I need to go to the bathroom. And you need to move so I get the fuck out of here. This bitch refused to move. I had to call management. I actually had to turn the music off. And I said, I need a manager to remove this girl out of the DJ booth right fucking now. She refuses to move. And she's screaming at, and screaming at the top of her lungs, Don't fucking touch me! Don't fucking touch me! I was like, I have nowhere to go. That's the only way out. Manager comes over, turn the music back up. She's refusing to leave because Kevin's telling her, like, you get the fuck out of here. She's like, you can't tell me what the fuck to do. Kevin's getting pissed. Yeah. Ten more minutes go by. I'll fucking die to, to take a piss. So bad. Finally, Renee, because, you know, she's sucking Renee's dick, literally, Comes over and takes him another 10 minutes to get this bitch out of the fucking DJ booth. At which point, I didn't give a shit. I told him, I was like, we're doing bricks on. I played a long ass fucking five minute song so I can go wait in line to take a piss. And they're like, oh, she's fired. I was like, yeah, she's been fired so many times. I don't know why you guys hired her. And then Kevin's like, well, she's stuck over Renee's dick. I go, obviously. obviously. Because, yeah, but you know, but, and then they kept telling me, like, well, you know, you the girls are upset, blah, blah, blah. I was like, you're, you're I'm pointing out to the girls that are breaking these rules that are getting fired. Why are... does it matter what they fucking say? They're getting fired. Yeah. I mean... Oh, no. It didn't fucking matter. It didn't fucking matter. I was fucking wrong. So, you know what happened? <coughs> One day, after being told many times that they could yeah. replace me in 10 seconds, and they could, uh, they could get anybody to do my job, I quit. Took all my shit and quit. Now that place is pure anarchy because uh, Stan don't give a fuck about enforcing the rules. Managers don't really care about stealing, so they don't enforce the rules. You know, the other <laughs> just they can't enforce the rules without managers, so the place yeah. has gone to shit. Yeah. Yeah, I even have customers uh, who know me from Chica's telling me that's gone to shit. I was like, what do you want me to do about it? Fuck them. Well, my problem. I got some problem. 
Like, that's our opinion on Chiquis Bonitas. It was okay. It was yeah. pretty okay. It was okay when we started, and when we both left, it was on the downturn. But that's the end. Danny, thank you for uh, doing this with me. You're welcome. Okay. And uh, guys, we're going to wrap this up. Don't forget, please share, like, and subscribe. YouTube will not recommend my type of videos, so please share them, like them. Please tell you, your dad, your cousin, you know, your priest, I don't give a shit who wants to listen. But just have them, share, like, and subscribe. All right? See you next time. Peace.